the Macquarie's. It's a history through some photographs. My family, as I know it, came from Eilly and Angus Macquarie. My great-grandfather was born in Cologne, Eilly, in 1834. Angus married a lady called Anne Campbell in Cologne, on the 13th of November, 1852. The next recorded as living in Greenock in 1881 census. Their address was given as 24 Tobago Street. If you look at the birth of the four children in the census, it's clear that they had been in Greenock for quite some time before this. Their oldest child, Malcolm, is aged 19 at the time of the census, and his birthplace was given as Greenock. Therefore, it's almost certain that they arrived here at least 19 years prior to this census. My grandfather, Angus Macquarie, the horses that were owned by Drummonds, the tin box manufacturers in Greenock, my grandfather had eventually become the foreman over the transport, i.e. horses in these days. He had nine children, and my father was the youngest of seven boys, and was named John. My father was an amateur boxer until 1932, when he entered the sport professionally in 1934. He married my mother, Jane Doherty, in Greenock, and he had three children, with myself being the eldest. We come along to quite an interesting photograph. This, this was taken when the Joan Drummond had celebrated his 90th birthday. And in the photograph, there's a, a diploma, which in these days was called an illuminated address. And this was presented to him by his family. In this photograph, there are all the managers that were employed by Drummond, and my grandfather is at the front of the photograph on the left hand side, sitting beside Mr. Drummond's son, Mr. Drummond himself, and another gentleman. Um, the illuminated address is, is quite something in these days, and uh, I often look at this and envy the, the fact that they could do it and have a historical record of his company. The, uh, the other photograph I'd like to talk about is. A photograph that was taken when my granny Macquarie was about 19 years of age before she got married to my grandfather. Her name had been Kneebone and her family had come to Greenock from the south of England. They bought and sold fish from barrows in Greenock and they had been fish merchants until she married my grandfather. I have another nice photograph here that was taken in 1955. This was taken at a family celebration. My aunt was celebrating her 25th anniversary. My aunt May, she would be married to Johnny Reed. And at the same time, my uncle had returned from Canada after being there for 33 years. This was his first visit back to Greenock in 33 years. The photograph shows my granny in the middle with her seven sons and two daughters. From left was my uncle Freddy, one who had come from Canada. And then it was Archie, May, George, Malcolm, Granny, my father, my uncle Willie, my auntie Annie and my uncle Angus. It's a very good family photograph and it's one we treasure very much in the family. Another photograph is uh, my grandmother with my Aunt Annie, who was the youngest of her family, and this was taken just prior to her being married. And the two children, the girl in the sailor suit and the little boy, this was my aunt Anne and my father, John Macquarie. I think this was taken about 1919. The photograph is my mother and father I think it was taken just before they were married, which would be about 1933-ish. And the photograph the group of children was taken down at Inverkip Beach about 1957-ish and shows myself sitting in the background with my oldest son, Stephen, 
my young brother George, my sister Jane and my son John. It seems quite strange to see us all sitting there and me with these four children. However, I was born in 1934 and was raised as an only child. And uh, after I got married, mother and father, I don't know if they decided it or not, or it happened as a great surprise, but she had a further two of her family, so that the my two sons had an uncle and aunt the same ages as themselves, and they all went through school together. So you can imagine it caused quite conf- some confusion. So we always told them, don't bother saying uncles or aunts or anything. You're all cousins when you're in school, so just remember that. So it maybe saved them quite a lot of uh, explanations and embarrassing moments. The other photograph here was the man walking along with his, his hands stuck in his trouser pockets was taken. When I was about six years of age, there was my father, myself, holding onto my father's arm. The two other, other little boys was my cousin Alec and my other cousin John Drain. We were all over a day in the noon. Uh, my mother's sister Mary had died at a very early age, just in her early 20s, and my mother had taken care of the children for a couple of years until my uncle Alec got married again, and then they moved down to England. To couple with this photograph is my father standing with the said uncle Alec Drain, posed with her pipes, and these days everyone seemed to smoke a pipe. The other photograph was a photograph that was taken while my wife and myself on the holiday at Colin Drive with John and Stephen. My wife had uh, been born in Rothsey and went over to Colin Drive as a young girl where her father worked as a village postman. The Macquarries as a family, going back to the original family of my grandfather Macquarie, with them all being born in the early part of the 1900s, from about 1900 something. My father was a, one of the youngest, he was born in 1913. It was quite a difficult time to rear a big family during the, what they called the bad times. So my grandfather was working by himself and the boys, they didn't really have jobs. So the oldest ones had rented a dairy or bought it, I'm not really quite sure in Greenock at St Lawrence Street and this was run by the sons albeit I don't know the way they run it from the stories my father told me I think they did nothing but argue and not deliver too much milk but anyway this was where they started off and they run that, that dairy right up till about 1936 and my father worked there while he trained as a boxer and he this was a, a very small source of income. They had to give up the dairy when the cooperative had become a big concern in Greenock and they delivered milk, uh, I think at a slightly cheaper rate. But the big thing in these days was people bought things out of the cooperative for what they called their dividend. And as they got the S at the end of the year for all the purchase they'd made the cooperative. So the family had given up the dairy after that. And my father, he worked in his first job at the age of 20 after stopping boxing at the Caledonian Foundry in He was a craneman up there all of his life after that till he retired. The rest of the family all settled into jobs and reared their own families in various sizes. My uncle Malky being one of the most productive of the family and they ended up with quite a large family because... His first wife had died, they had three of a family, and then he married my aunt Lily, and they had more boys and girls, so they had quite a large family. Now they're scattered, as the Macquarie's are, in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and Canada. So they followed the old Greenock tradition of emigrating. My mother's family, they were Greenock born and bred, and the earliest information I have of them, that side of the family, it dates back to about 1902 with my grandfather, James Doherty, marrying my grandmother, Mary Jane Donaghy. My mother, Jane Doherty, was born on the 18th of February, 
1915. She was the second youngest of five children with Helen, Joe, Mary, my mother and Hugh. The family were all born at 6 called Blaine Street, Greenock. This house was rented by the Donaghy and Doherty family for about four generations. My grandfather, James Doherty, died at the age of 36, leaving my grandmother a widow. She raised her five children by herself and chose not to remarry. In 1946, she died at the age of 65. My grandfather Doherty, with four of his children, the youngest in the photograph, standing between his knees, was my mother Jane. And the, this is really the only proper photograph I have of him. But the ironic part of it is the next group, you see that the family has increased to five. And my grandmother is sitting with my uncle Hugh, who was the youngest of the family, with her arm around him. And in between the first photograph I'd spoken about and this photograph, my grandfather Doherty had died of pleurisy. So this was she, her sitting at that early age with her family as it stood and she was going to look after them for the rest of her life. The next photograph is a very typical photograph of my granny Doherty. Every any time you saw her, she was always surrounded by grandchildren. And uh, this was taken at the Battery Park in Greenock. The next photograph is, is a photograph of uh, my aunt Isabella, who was a younger sister of my grand Doherty. The next photograph is Joe Doherty, the second youngest of her family, with his wife Mary Aiken. And the little girl was their daughter Ellis, who has since married and stays in Canada now. Uh, some photographs of my grand's family in the uh, late teens and early twenties. My mother and then there's my Aunt Mary and my Uncle Joe sitting rowing a boat apparently. And the last photograph is my Aunt Helen, or Nelly as we always called her. The group photograph is my Aunt Nelly again with three of her family. There's Robbie at the back, Sally Sarah and Mary sitting at the front having her head scratched or something by her young sister. Sitting beside her is her sister Mary with two of her children Mary and Joan and sitting in the background looking over them is my granny Doherty. Next photograph is myself at the battery part again with a, a pail and sitting and standing at the back of me is my cousin Mary Drain crying for some reason, probably because I've got her pale. The Doherty family, as I remember them, they were all orientated towards my granny as she was a sort of linchpin of the family. You know, they, you always met people at Six Blaine Street and we were all familiar there because I had been born there as well. And the, the photographs of the Battery Park, just of Eldon Street and Greenup, I say, their holiday snaps, as in the dates they were taken, the 1920s and 30s, the Doherty family and various offspring, they didn't go away on holidays. The holidays were made up of days away to local parks and shores in the area near Greenock. But why Battery Park? Well, Battery Park was flat, it was good for ball games, it was a children's play area with swings and roundabouts and a slide. I don't think the slides are popular nowadays because of safety reasons. But then for the older children there was a swimming pool and the entry was about 3D or 6D which is one pence or two pence and the younger ones had a paddling pool next to it. We spent lots of holidays there, our holiday days there at the park. It was quite a walk because that was the way we got there. We used to walk from Coplane Street down to Battery Park, which was about two miles. For the life of me, I can't remember how long it took us to get there with the children and the prams and whatever. But anyway, we had quite a day there. We had our lemonade and sometimes lemonade bottles filled with water and the or pieces. And there was a little tally shop across the street where we could have our ice creams. These were one of the best memories I have of the family. 
My uncle Joe, he was the second oldest in the family. He actually worked at the Patrick Park, not in the park, but in the torpedo factory next to it. He was a molder, and my uncle Hugh, who's not in any of these pictures, he served this time as a coppersmith. My mother, she worked in the Marina Mill till she got married, as did my Aunt Mary. My Aunt Nelly, she worked at the uh, grocer's shop in what they called Brackelson Square, which is the, at the roundabout at the entrance to the Green Cemetery. There was a little green grocer's shop at one of these corners. It's been converted to a house now. The men all seemed to do quite well. Joe being a older and Hugh being a coppersmith and the girls and they all seem to have quite a good uh, life of it in Greenock and uh, none of them emigrated or anything like that, they all stayed in Greenock. 